If you've watched any of my videos about amateur radio, you all know that I'm a great fan of QRP Labs and their kits. I think they're absolutely brilliant. These kits got me back into amateur radio after 40 years and uh, I've been using them steadily now for the last four years or so. I have a QCX Plus, which I built for 40 meters, a QCX Mini for 20 meters, and a QCX Mini for 17 meters. I really love these radios. And uh, I've taken them on trips and uh, all sorts of things. Now recently I've uh, built my first QMX, which is the multi-band version of these, and that was a huge success, worked straight away. And I took it on holiday with me to France. I've been hiking with it. I've used it outside in the field a lot and at home. It's brilliant. It's got SWR protection and it has an SWR meter to help you, a tuning facility to help you tune up your antenna, all sorts of things. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. Um, but I decided I'd build a second one and it hasn't worked. And this was a surprise to me because although I had a 40 year break from amateur radio, I've continued my interest in electronics and I'm an experienced builder and I design and build my own equipment. But I made this one really carefully, so I thought, and it just has never come alive. And I realized after a while it wasn't going to, so I had to look into it. And there's a very important point here that the responsibility for this is mine. This is a kit and I can't expect somebody who supplies a kit to ensure or guarantee that it's going to work every time. And things like static voltage spikes, all sorts of things can cause components to go wrong. And I'm sure that they test them and program them and that when they leave the factory, everything's as good as it can be. And there's a lesson I can learn from it about being careful and which you might find interesting and helpful too. So without any further ado, let's take a look now. I'll go over to my video I made while I was looking into the diagnostics to find out what was actually wrong with my QMX radio and why it didn't come alive when I first powered it up. So let's take a look now. So this is my second QMX from QRP Labs and it's on the bench because I haven't been able to get it to work. I started it up as suggested with a limited current power supply, but that clearly suggested there was something wrong, probably a short. So I've investigated that, tried everything, and found yes, there is a short. And the short is on the VDD line, and uh, it's a bit tricky to deal with because it's on the board. I don't actually think it's anything to do with my construction but I do accept responsibility for it because it's a kit and I can't just assume there's a problem with the radio. So maybe something's damaged by static or something else. So what I've done is look at all the capacitors and everything else in that line connected to ground because the short is to ground, removed an awful lot of them. Uh, I'll put that on the screen in a moment from the microscope. And um, I still can't clear the fault. If I try with a thermal camera, then I seem to be seeing a really distinct hotspot in the main processor chip, which is where this line eventually goes, with loads of bypass capacitors. And I've checked all of those. So I think it must be the chip, sadly. And I guess maybe that got fried by some static, which is very unfortunate. So what I'm going to do now is protect the components around it, heat it up with some hot air, remove the chip, and see if the short has disappeared. So here's the board and this is one of the power supply connectors and this is the other one. You can see some of the pins are missing where I've removed them. And if I use the multimeter, we can hear straight away that there is a short to ground, which there shouldn't be. And in fact, this covers a lot of these capacitors. Uh, and you can see I've removed and replaced a lot of them and you can probably see a bit of dodgy soldering here and there. So I've done everything I can to trace the fault, but when I used the thermal camera, I saw a hot spot on the chip. Uh, where's it gone? Here's the chip. And this is the main processor to which a lot of those capacitors are attached as decoupling capacitors. So let's just take a look at the hot spot on that when I apply some voltage. So here's the outline of the chip seen on the thermal camera. 
and I'm, I've applied one volt with 600 milliamp maximum from the power supply and very rapidly the hotspot appeared and it looked very scary so I very quickly disconnected it but it does seem likely that that's the, the main fault. So I'm ready to remove the chip. I've covered the small components around it with metal tape. Um, so now I'm going to apply some flux, I think quite generously. And I've got 380 at 100 on my quick hot air station. Start to heat the area around it. Okay, so the chip is gone, so now let's go back to the pins and see if the short is gone. So there's one, so beep and no beep, so the short is gone. So sadly, this chip was the problem, it's kaput. So this board will now have to wait until I find some other way of fixing it. I may just have to buy another board, who knows. But at least I've established what the problem was. It wasn't a capacitor, it wasn't anything on the board. It wasn't anything I've done in the construction. It is a failed chip. So now that I know the fault lies in the chip and the board is probably okay and probably all the components on it are okay, what's the way forward for me? Well, I don't think I can fix it immediately. Uh, so the next logical thing to do if I really want to keep having more of these radios is to buy another one and I have and it arrived uh, Just yesterday. I've called it QMX number three Here it is in its box and it's ready to build and I hope to start building it tomorrow and With that and with the old one something I've realized is that I've moved into a new place to do my electronics work and it could be that the materials on the walls the bench the floor and so on are perhaps a little less static friendly and I need to be extra super super careful and make sure I've sorted that out and I can ground myself properly before I get started on the new one and uh, I hope to get that working and, and be using it again soon so as far as the old one goes if I could get a chip I would I'm not sure I can because it clearly needs to be pre-programmed I don't know if that's even possible I know you can buy a bare bones board with the SMD components on it so I may do that and either swap the chip or swap the components who knows uh, and if I don't do any of that I'll have some very useful spare parts for one of these radios so if it all works I hope to come back and perhaps do a part two and show all my QMX radios up and running and otherwise I'll be back soon anyway with more videos very soon about electronics and amateur radios so thanks for watching